Hey everybody, I got a couple of thank yous and shout outs I got to do at the beginning of this video. But if you guys just ain't got time to listen to all that, uh, feel free to skip ahead to the story at around 2 minutes and 10 seconds. Hello, Scandalites and Sesso Squad. I have missed you guys. I know you guys have missed me. I hope you are all doing well. This is Ashley with Ashley Says So, and I am back with another Old Hollywood Scandals video. But before we get into it, I got to give a few thank yous. First and foremost, I have to say thank you to the members of my channel. It's truly something that you guys not only subscribe to me, but have chosen to support me and to one of my main members who is actually a shining star. Black Panther, I have to give you a special thanks. Not only does Black Panther support me as a member, he buys memberships for other people on my channel just so they can see the member videos that are not shown to the public. Thank you so much, Black Panther. And for the Christmas Venmos and cash apps that were sent to me, I have to thank Joyce Blizzard. I have to thank Miss Jasmine Bishop and Miss Robin Thames. Then I want to thank Miss Patrice Miller for the ring light you gave me. And lastly, but not least, I have to thank a lady who's actually become a part of my life through this YouTube channel, Miss Brenda Bunch. She has helped me with advice. She has donated a lot to my channel. Let me just put it like this. Uh, half of my Christmas list on Amazon Prime, she bought half of the Christmas list for me. And I just have to say thank you. And two more, thank you to Miss Kathy and thank you to Lolita Marie. And now, since I've got my Oscar speech out of the way, let's get to the tea and the scandal on Mr. Little Willie John after this disclaimer. I'm not sure what's true or false in this video. I take gossip and tea and scandal from online, from books, from magazine, from word of mouth, and I ball it all up and I tell you guys a story. The whole video is for entertainment purposes. I have done my research. Make sure you do yours. Now, let's get to the video. William Edward John, aka Little Willie John, was born on November the 15th, 1937, in Cullendale, Arkansas. His mother's name was Lily, and his father's name was Murtis, and along with Willie, the Johns had eight more children, one of them being the famous singer, Mabel John. Now, growing up, Little Willie John was said to do well in school, but he didn't really like school, so he would do things to get in trouble. Like the time when he was probably in, what, second, third grade, and he had a teacher that was getting on to him because he had been talking or something like that. Well, Little Willie John told her that she needed to shut up talking to him because he'll get his big brother to come and bust her head to the white meat. Or you got the time when he ended up stealing glasses from a female classmate and wore them all the way home, and then when his mama asked Ask, you know where the glasses came from he concocted this whole story about how he had an eye exam that day in class and they said his eyesight was so bad that they gave him glasses immediately and his mother and father sort of believed it until the principal came knocking on the door and told the family that little Willie was a little liar and that he had stole those glasses and it's actually really crazy that Willie would do these things because the folks say that his daddy Murtis would tear his behind up in fact some folks later in time tried to accuse Murtis of being a little too quick with the bill, insinuating that he was abusive to Willie. But regardless of if it was abusive or not, the whoopings wouldn't stop coming because Willie wouldn't stop doing things to get whooping. The folks say that Willie and some of his siblings formed a gospel group called the United Five, and Willie would apparently sing lead most times because he had such a beautiful voice. Well, of course, everybody in church would just love to hear this child sing, so Willie took advantage of that. Per gossip, when he was around eight or nine years old, he and Levi Stubbs of the Four Tops used to go door to door trying to catch housewives home alone. And whenever they found one that was home alone, Willie's little bitty self would come up to the front door and knock and say something like, hello, Miss Daisy. Boy, you sure looking mighty fine today. I'm really just stopping by to tell you that the good Lord has been mighty good to me. As a matter of fact, he told me to stop at your house today. Told me to sing you a song. I, I think he's got a word for you. And of course, the churchy housewives would light up. Yeah, Lord, sing your song for me, Willie. And Willie would just get to singing and praising God. And the whole time, 
Levi Stubbs was behind the house, stealing every fruit off of every tree that he could find, stealing any clothes that was hanging up on the clothesline that he or Willie wanted. And if the house had a back door, the boy probably would sneak in there and steal some from in there too. And by the time Willie would stop singing, the woman would just be in tears, honey. Not knowing that when she went back into her house or into her backyard, she would truly be crying because Willie and Levi had deceived her by stealing and lying. And so yes, little Willie John's childhood was very wild and very raucous, but as he progressed into a teenager, uh, his behavior would only get even more daring. Rumor has it when he was in the eighth grade, his mama was at home one day cleaning and washing the dishes. And all of a sudden she gets a phone call from the school telling her that Willie has been caught in an empty classroom doing the hokey pokey with a female classmate. Now this boy was just getting out of doggone line. And this was one step too far for the school that he was in. So honey, they kicked him out of the regular school and he had to end up going to like an A school or a school set aside for a troubled kid. Now to get to his music career, little Willie John was born with talent and the voice that he possessed was not easy to come by, not then and not today, most definitely. And like I've already told you, his mama and daddy already had him singing in church, but for Willie, this wasn't enough. Girls wasn't really going for no goody two uh, church boys like that, especially if there were some uh, bad boys around or worldly boy. And that's the kind of music he wanted to sing, secular music. So around 13 to 14 years old, Willie started to sneak out at night and go and perform at local talent shows. And every time he would blow the audience away. And soon word of his talent show performances had gotten around and at least two talent scouts were on the lookout for him. One was a man named Johnny Otis and the other one was a man named Harry Balk. Now Johnny Otis was rumored to be this close to working with Willie, but once he really saw little Willie John, he thought that he was too young. You know, he didn't really think that this child should go on a tour with these adult musicians, especially with the record company he was working with, which was King Records. But the second man, Harry Balk, knew that little Willie John could be a star and he was determined to get him there. And so Harry Balk not only had a talk with little Willie John, he also talked to little Willie John's parents and he actually talked them into letting him become their son's manager. And so in 1953, when Willie was around 15 years old, he recorded his first song. The song was called Mommy What Happened to Our Christmas Tree and it was actually actually a local hit, but it was like a novelty song, a Christmas novelty song, you know what I mean? It really wasn't a real true professional song. But like I said, the song did absolutely well and Willie's parents were ecstatic about this. This is the type of music they wanted their son to record, you know what I'm saying? If he wasn't going to sing gospel, let him sing little cute innocent songs like this. But for Harry Balk and Willie, they both knew that Willie just couldn't continue like this. He had this super powerful adult singing voice and here he is singing about mommy and a Christmas tree. Not only that, you had Willie on the cover of a record wearing a V-neck white sweater surrounded by teen cheerleaders, looking all sweet and goody two-shoes and innocent, but in real life, Willie was an alcohol drinking, trying to smash every girl he ran into, teenage boy. There were several stories that flew around the studios that he recorded in of men who didn't know little Willie John and would come up and try to talk to him and be like, you know, hey little fella, you do good, but baby Willie wouldn't even let them finish the sentence before he went off. Hey, I might be short and little, I might even be a fella, but I'ma get up in that ass if you don't leave me alone. Child, them men will be backing up real quick, time you got a young blood, you got it. And I don't really know if they were doing all of that, but the truth was they would be shocked by uh, Willie acting like this. And even more shocked would be the women. The women would come up and sit beside Willie and do the same thing. Ooh, little boy, you are such a little cutie, look at you. And Willie might say something to them like, yeah, I'm little. Little enough to go up under your skirt and pet your cat. You gonna let me do it? And the women would be sitting up there with their hair blue back. So this was the real little Willie John and him and the people around him felt like he should be making music that was more to the kind of person that he was. So soon the manager Harry Balk just kind of paused on Willie recording any music altogether. And instead he sent him on tour with band leader Paul Williams and his band. And so little Willie John toured with uh, Paul Williams for maybe a year before the band leader got tired of catching a uh, little Willie John gambling, catching him at afternoon night bars, rubbing up women's thighs, and drinking, 
wasn't smoking. And so he fired little Willie John. But the firing was a blessing in disguise because see now little Willie John was a free hire. He also was around 17, 18 years old and his personality was more known. And Johnny Otis came back around because now he figured, hey, this little boy ain't no doggone kid. He definitely can rock and roll with the people at uh, King Records on tour. And as soon as little Willie John signed to King Records, oh baby, he was off. And he did what a lot of people could never do. And that was having a hit with his first uh, released record. It was a song called All Around the World. He also came out with another hit, which was called Need Your Love So Bad. These songs came out in 1955, but it was that next year when Little Willie John had a rock. 1956, Little Willie John was 19 years old and he showed folks what he was truly about by releasing the song Fever. Fever in the morning, fever all through the night. What? Child, talk about a heck of a song. It is in the top comment. Go click the link and go listen to how soulful and powerful that this young boy sang the song. So anyways, fever propels little Willie John to stardom. He is not what you would call a superstar just yet, but he is definitely on his way. And so since we have gotten to his launch pad of fame, it is time to get to the scandal, child. The scandal. Let's get to it. Now let me tell y'all right now. Johnny Otis might have now felt comfortable bringing Little Willie John on the tour with the adult acts, but he should have thought if the adult acts would feel comfortable on tour with Little Willie John. Chaudy's folks said that Little Willie John would be throwing water on people. He would run past people and slap them in the back of the neck. And don't let you be a woman. Honey said a woman would walk in all dressed and styling and profiling thinking she doing something. This crazy boy would wait until the woman got in front of a crowd of people then he would sneak up behind her and lift her dress straight up over her head. And sometimes it would even get worse than that. Baby, sometimes he would lift up her dress and then snatch her panties down real quick and then stick a finger in her booty hole. Then they say he was always stealing folks money. Uh, gossip claims that the Midnighters went on tour with him the whole full tour and then at the end of the tour, they look around, they money gone. Come to find out, Little Willie John then took these folks money and uh, went gambling with it. Now he did end up up paying the money back but it took a while for him to gather up all the funds so you know these folks was mad they wanted their money now then what about when jackie wilson about jumped on little willie john one time rumor has it jackie wilson had just bought a brand new beautiful gun that he took on tour with him and he had it in his hotel room well one day when he get off the stage from performing and go to his room he notices that his gun is gone so he goes downstairs to talk to the hotel clerk and tell her, hey, I think somebody broke into my room. My gun is gone. And I suppose the hotel clerk maybe didn't respond the way he wanted her to respond. So allegedly Jackie Wilson started to get a bit belligerent. Child, them folks say that woman pulled out a gun and set it on the desk right in front of her and was like, you got one more time to talk to me like that. Baby, you know Jackie Wilson froze up quick. But he didn't freeze because he was scared of the gun. He froze because the gun was his gun. Come to find out, Little Willie John had took the gun and had sold it to the hotel clerk after persuading her that she may need some protection because one day she might have a ranting and raving customer or one day somebody might rob her. Etta James had a lot of stories to tell about Little Willie John because she was on tour with Little Willie John a lot. As a matter of fact, she and Little Willie John were the youngest on the tour. They were around the same age. So she said they used to cut up a lot. They used to drink, smoke, shoot spitballs and have spitballs stuck to folks neck when they was performing and spit balls all in the women's hair. Used to run up and down hotel hallways. Just do a lot of antics. But uh, rumor has it that sometimes Etta James would feel like Little Willie John would take things too far. She said he had this habit of going inside the club or bar where he was supposed to perform and getting cool with some of the local guys. And y'all know in every small town, there's always this local guy that's the big guy. You know what I'm saying? He the big G with all the money, the nice cars, the women. And those are the guys that Little Willie John would be all chummy with and talking to. And so, of course, these type of guys would love to be seated in their booth and be seen with the famous musician that's about to sing. It gave them what the children today call clout. You know, gave them some umph, a name. So anyway, the big G's would be sitting and talking with Little Willie John. They 
laughing, chatting up the girls, and then out of nowhere, little Willie John would point to their finger and be like, oh man, that's a nice ring you got on. And then little Willie John would play it up, you know, oh man, I ain't even made enough money to get me a ring like that yet, or man, I left my ring at home and I need one on me, I'm trying to shine on stage, so let me wear your ring, can I just wear it on stage and you can get it back as soon as I'm done performing. So here go the big G, yeah, yeah, you know it ain't nothing but a thing, here you go young cat, here you go. Baby Willie would get on that stage clean and be sitting up there flashing that ring like Beyonce, honey. And then as soon as the song was over, this boy would run off the stage and disappear from the whole club and then go hide in the tour bus. And then as soon as all of the other acts got on the tour bus, he would sit up talking some go, go, drive, drive. And then he would just uh, drop off having stolen whoever ring he had. Well, one day his behind got caught trying to leave with somebody's ring and the big G in this town pulled out a gun on him. But thankfully, instead of shooting little Willie John, he just slapped him in the back of his slicked up head and told him, boy, don't you ever play with me like that again. Give me my doggone ring. Solomon Burke was another one who talked about a bad habit that little Willie John used to have. And Solomon Burke said that he was cool with little Willie John. In fact, he loved little Willie John. But he said that little Willie John would sometimes just do too much, just be out of control. He said the thing that he noticed most is that little Willie John had a habit of starting fights. He said one night in particular, he sat back and watched little Willie John just walk up to the biggest dude in the club and just start yapping, just going off and said big dude was just kind of sitting back looking at little Willie John like you know little bro you all right baby said little Willie John hauled off and punched that big man in the face instantly the big man started trying to jump on him well of course all of the acts on the tour and the people signed with King Records are not just finna sit back and watch the littlest person on their tour just get beat up by some big guy so all of the other music acts start trying to come in and fight the dude and then the dude's homeboys start fighting and it just became a big huge brawl in the club and while everybody is fighting and throwing hands, little Willie John runs over to the other side of the club and starts standing and talking to Solomon Burke, talking about, man, would you just look at that? Everybody fighting. What happened, Saul? And Solomon Burke sitting back like, now nah, I know you ain't asking me what started this fight. I saw you over there messing with that man. You didn't see yourself starting this fight? Baby, why come Willie told that boy, no, -uh, I didn't see it. I got the worst view in the house. Just foolish, child. Little Willie John was foolish and what made him even more foolish is that he's doing all of this stuff and behaving this way and he had epilepsy. There's this one story that said that he was in the room with two girls and he did go into an epileptic seizure and the girls came running out. They thought that he was having a drug overdose and they had very good reason to think that because allegedly Little Willie John not only smoked marijuana, he also did cocaine and he also did heroin sometimes. And speaking of the women, since I mentioned those two girls, baby, little Willie John used to be knocking them down, honey. Matter of fact, y'all remember how I told y'all that Bo Diddley might have some of y'all grandmas or great grandmas on a camera in the Etta James video? Remember I mentioned that? Well, somebody grandma was definitely on camera with little Willie John because per Etta James, they were on tour and after a show one night, they went back to a house party. Honey, Etta James said that she was just kind of going from room to room and opening doors and she opened one door. Baby said somebody's granny named Blundine was laid out on the bed butt naked with her legs just spread open. And Willie was laid down by her TT using his fingers to point out the lips and the clitorotitis to the camera that Bo Diddley was standing in the room holding. Honey, that stuff them folks was doing on that tour road back then, baby, it got wild. And I'm telling y'all, some folks' grandmoms is definitely busting it wide open on these doggone cameras from back then. Oh, and before we move on, for all of you smart Alex in the uh, comments, I know clitorotitis ain't no doggone word. I have to mask my words because if not, the upper room of YouTube will come down on me. So back to the women, little Willie John had his pick, baby. It was when the women didn't pick him where things got strange. Rumor has it that the drummer for the group, The Upsetters, a man by the name of Charles Connor, had found out a girl at the concert or what, or the show was interested in him and he was talking to her backstage. And uh, little Willie John just keeps walking back and forth down the hallway. You know what I'm saying? He just coming out acting like he forgot stuff, just all in the way. Then he'll start saying little stuff, you know, Charles, I hope you've been warming up on your drum because we really got to bring the show to these folks. 
And Charles trying to play it cool would just be like, you know, I got it. Okay, that's cool. I, I got everything. Then they said at one point that not only did little Willie John kind of walk down the hall, this time he actually just stopped and started conversing with Charles and the lady. Listening in, answering questions, telling jokes. And of course, he's very funny, very charismatic. So the girl is just like, uh -huh, girl, Willie, you crazy. Oh, and this gets Willie, baby. He starts doing stuff at Charles' expense. Like, you know, Charles, how you get that spot on your tie? Here come Charles looking down there. And of course, there's nothing there. Once again, <laughs> Willie, you crazy. Then he snatched Charles' hat off his head. <laughs> Willie, you crazy. Baby, didn't the folks say that little Willie John did something like kick Charles in the shin or something like that? Walk with me one more time, you do. Baby, Charles had enough. Charles was like, you want to embarrass me? I'm finna embarrass you. Child, the folks say that he lifted little Willie John up by the back of the neck like this and oh, had him and he was digging his thumbs and his fingers oh, all into the uh, back of little Willie John neck. Then after he dug in the skin and lifted him high enough, he ended up dropping little Willie John on the floor. And this time, what no, ha <laughs> Willie, you crazy. Now was, ooh, Willie, is your neck okay? Baby, Willie skedaddled on out of there. You know he was shame. And allegedly, he would do things like that sometimes. You know, act like he joking and playing, but really kind of hate. You know what I'm saying? I think he just wasn't used to a girl choosing somebody over him. And sometimes Willie wanted the TT or the girl so bad, baby, he was ready to risk it all. The folks say him and singer Marv Johnson ended up on a tour and they ended up liking the same girl. And so they were saying little things here and there and then one night it just culminated into a big argument. And so Willie was like, you know what? I'm through with this. Come on outside, Marv. Come on. Let's settle this. And you know, Marv was like, baby, I'm there. I'm there. I'm finna whoop your little bitty tail. I'm there. So Marv Johnson walking outside, rolling up his sleeves. He's still talking. Where you at? I'm finna F you. <laughs> freeze frame because little Willie John had grabbed the gun and had let off a shot. Baby Marv ain't say another word. Just took off running into the night. But although Marv thought little Willie John was serious, it was revealed later on that evening that little Willie John was just playing. You know, he really did let off a shot, but he didn't try to shoot Marv or anything like that. Uh, when they asked him about it, he just started laughing and was like, you know, I just wanted to see uh, Marv Johnson go from black to gray. Now, before little Willie John found his wife and settled down, there was a lady that drove him crazy. Y'all all know her name, Miss Lithophane Pridgen. And let's just be real, y'all hear Fane's name over and over because Fane was a famous groupie. But what y'all probably didn't know is that she started with little Willie John. Gossip claims that when she was a teenager, she was a friend to Etta James. And then when Etta James started to go on tour, she asked Etta, could she come with her so she could kind of Freak on some of the guys in the band. Let's just be real. That's what it was. Well, as soon as Litha Fane got on the tour bus, she was smitten with little Willie John, as was he with her. They spent all of their time together, and allegedly, Litha Fane's first son was by little Willie John. That's what Etta James said. But little Willie John's uh, family has yet to acknowledge this rumor. Like, I don't even think they mention it, but let's move on. What I do know is that little Willie John mentioned so much to Lithophane is that she basically talked about him all the way through her life. As a matter of fact, maybe five, six, seven years after she had stopped talking to little Willie John, she had met back up with him and by this time, she was dating Jimi Hendrix. Honey, how about Jimi Hendrix was so jealous? He wouldn't even shake little Willie John's hand, baby. But little Willie John ain't care. And he didn't care because by that time, little Willie John was with the real love of his life. A young, pretty, quiet lady named Darlene. Oh my gosh, they say that little Willie John just had stars in his eyes as soon as he saw Darlene. He thought that she was a doll. She introduced himself and then immediately invited her to come out to New York with him where he was performing. Darlene does go to New York with little Willie John and she says that while she was there, he showed her the time of her life. He was very attentive, bought her things, took her to fancy places to eat, you know, just the work. Now, he was doing all of this stuff in front of the scene that Darlene was seeing, but behind the scenes, he was doing even more. Without Darlene even knowing about it, 
Little Willie John had went and bought an engagement ring, baby. He had called his mama and told his mama that he was ready to get married, so they needed to prepare the house to have a wedding. He even went to go get a wedding license, a marriage license, to proclaim he and Darlene married. All of this was done before he even proposed to Darlene. They had only been knowing each other for like a week. When he uh, finally did propose to her, she said yes. So it probably wasn't even a month, maybe like two weeks later, they went down to his uh, mother's house and they got married in the year of 1957. And baby, you know the folks say it was some messiness involved, honey, because let's be clear, baby. Little Willie John was basically MC Hammer. He was taking care of pretty much everybody. So his family were kind of worried that, you know, Darlene would just kind of take that money from them, especially when she ended up having two children, two sons by Little Willie John. Well, the family had no reason to worry about Darlene, but they did have a reason to worry because by the time 1960 1962 came around, some of the money started to kind of slow up for Little Willie John. It was like he was putting out music, but he wasn't getting the hits like he used to. And I only talked to you guys about Fever, but he had a few more hits. But by the time 61, 62, 63 came around, he was not making hits like that anymore. And he started to not be a priority for his record label. And then his gigs weren't that good anymore. He was basically turning into a has-been. And this has-been that he was turning into was only around 23 years old. And if you're asking, yes, Little Willie John had made a lot of money in those previous four to five years, but he had expensive taste. Maybe he always had tailored silk suits. Maybe he has taken everybody out for steak dinners. You know, he's gambled the money away. He's went shopping. He was very reckless with his money, but again, he was very young. So if that money dried up, what the heck was he going to do for the rest of his life? He had a family to take care of, a lot of people. And so he started to get depressed and he started to get destructive. Gossip claims that he started to be late for gigs if he showed up for a gig at all. He much rather spend his time on the corner drinking and smoking. He also started getting a little bit more involved with those drugs I mentioned earlier. And he started to cheat on his wife with loose women and hang out with a bunch of men who really didn't have his best interest interest at heart. Because Little Willie John's life started kind of going off the rails, um, he also started getting into trouble. In the year 1962 or 1963, he ended up racking up a whole bunch of charges on a phony credit card. And the law caught up with him, and I think they were charging him with fraud or something like that. Well, in 1964, he ended up getting in trouble again, this time for playing a small gig at a, a small club and the owner refused to pay Little Willie John. Well, Little Willie John grabbed a bottle and bust the owner upside the back of the head. This happened in Florida where Little Willie John was living at the time and so the police picked him up and he was charged with assault. However, he quickly paid bail and then he quickly jumped bail by fleeing Florida and never returning. After this whole ordeal where he bust the club owner upside the head, he ended up going to a fancy restaurant and I guess he loved steaks because he ended up ordering a steak and baby when he found out that that steak wasn't cooked right child he went to the kitchen and bust the chef upside the heat and truly from 1964 and beyond things just continued to go downhill and then in October of 1964 little Willie John had another gig in a little bitty uh rundown place called the Magic Inn and he went on stage and he put on a great show and then and at 1.30 in the morning, he ended up walking off stage and he talked for a while with his valet, a man by the name of Eddie Moore. And um, he ended up picking up two females, one for him and one for Eddie Moore. Those females' names were Sylvia Banks. And the other girl's name was Kay Morgan. So Eddie, Willie, Sylvia, and Kay ended up leaving the Magic Inn. And Willie decided that he wanted to go to an after-hour spot. You know, he wanted to go dance and drink some more before he took the girls back to the hotel room. And so they went to an illegal type of juke joint thing that was actually in somebody's house. So it was more like a house party, but at this place they were serving liquor, all that good stuff. Well, when the foursome get in there, they are all talking and drinking and sitting at the bar and soon this guy by the name of Kendall Roundtree comes up and starts talking to Little Willie John. Well, Kendall Roundtree was like an eight-time felon. He also was like 6'3", 6'4", over 200 pounds, you know, and Little Willie John didn't know this guy, but you know, cool, this guy want to come up and talk and drink with him, he's all for it. Well, I guess Kendall Roundtree wanted for Little Willie John to bed him that night instead of Little Willie John bedding Sylvia Bank because uh, Sylvia in 
ends up getting up and saying, you know, I gotta go to the little girl's bathroom and she walks off. As soon as she does, Kendall Roundtree, he sits in Sylvia's seat. Well, Sylvia ends up coming back from the bathroom and she's just kind of standing there waiting for Kendall to stop talking to little Willie John so he can get up and get out of her seat. Well, Kendall Roundtree has ended the conversation with little Willie John and he sees Sylvia right there waiting for the seat, but he just look and then just keep on drinking like he don't see her right there. So little Willie John is like, uh, hey man, can you get up and let her have her seat back? Man, F that B. I ain't giving no seat back. And as soon as this is said by Kendall Roundtree, Little Willie John's temper goes straight up. And so Little Willie John is like, hey brother, F you, you ain't gotta act like that. And you ain't finna be talking to my lady like that. You ain't finna be calling all these names. Kendall Roundtree reaches back and boom, bloodies Little Willie John's mouth. Also knocks Little Willie John uh, off the bench. And before Little Willie John could kind of get himself together, you know, he's dazed. Kendall Roundtree is up, ready to fight this little bitty man. So a lot of people that were at the party start to kind of hold Kendall Roundtree back. You know, they're holding both of his arms, so he's getting held back, but he's trying to break loose and fight. Well, while he's getting held back, Little Willie John finally does get up off the floor. And so he goes and runs into the kitchen of the house and he grabs a small steak knife. He comes running towards Kendall Roundtree, who is still being held back like this. And Little Willie John is like, ah, 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 ah. and that ah, is where he stabs Kendall Roundtree in the chest. But it happens so fast it's like boom boom in fact it was so fast that the people who were holding kendall roundtree up and other people at the party thought that little willie john had come up and punched kendall roundtree in the chest and also i don't even think kendall roundtree even knew what happened because allegedly he was still kind of hey let me go i'm finna get him i'm finna get him but then he starts to <sighs> and then his eye starts closing and then his knees buckle. He's kind of drooped like this. And so uh, the people that are holding him up, they let him fall to the floor. And they just feel like, man, that dude crazy and he drunk. Just let him sleep it off. But of course, Kendall Roundtree wasn't drunk. He had just been stabbed in the chest. And so now this man is lying in the middle of the floor and he's dying. And since the people around him are trying to let him sleep the liquor off, baby, while he's dying, folks are dancing, still drinking, and this goes on for like two hours. Finally, somebody goes to wake Kendall up, and they're like, hey man, man, wake up, wake up. And that's when they notice blood on his shirt. They yell out, hey man, this is blood, and, and he ain't responding. So everybody starts panicking. People are running out of the house, they're running into the woods, they're getting into their cars, trying to drive away, because nobody wants to be on the premises of an illegal house party club uh, when the police comes and finds possibly a dead body on the floor. But little Willie John is still there and he's had somebody at the party take the steak knife and go dump it in the backyard of the house. So the officers get there, they're questioning everybody and they come to little Willie John and they're like, you know, so y'all had a fight? And little Willie John says, yes, we did fight, but he hit me and I started having a seizure and I, I don't remember nothing after that. Well, as soon as little Willie John was out of earshot, his valet Eddie Moore calls the police back over and he tells the police that he saw little Willie John stab Kendall Roundtree. Sylvia Banks was another one. She told the police that she also saw little Willie John stab Kendall Roundtree. And that is absolutely funny because the whole reason the fight happened was to protect her honor. Well, little Willie John ends up getting arrested and he is charged with second degree murder, but then the charges drop to manslaughter. There were several people called to the stand and multiple people said that they didn't see little Willie John stab anybody. In fact, some people testified that they saw somebody else stab a uh, Kendall Roundtree. It seemed like little Willie John was going to get off. As a matter of fact, he had an excellent opportunity to get off, but it was a missed opportunity because of little Willie John's lawyer and also little Willie John himself. For some reason, little Willie John's lawyer would not take the self-defense angle. And it was the perfect angle to take. All he had to do was say that little Willie John had stabbed this guy in self-defense. I mean, they had actually fought. This guy was much bigger than little Willie John. So that would have flowed so perfectly. But instead, the lawyer took the angle of my client didn't stab anybody. Somebody else stabbed uh, Kendall Roundtree. So that's how the lawyer messed up the chances. And little Willie John messed up the chances by his demeanor. Witnesses say that he was just too prideful during the trial. They also 
also said that he was laughing when some of the other people testified. You know, he kept on leaning back, talking to his lawyer, giggling. You know, just very sure of himself, feeling like this was just another day in the park. And to be quite honest with you, a lot of people felt like Little Willie John coming off like this was another failure that should actually be attributed to his lawyer because it was clear that his lawyer had not coached him on how to be. Basically, anybody and everybody from back then and today knew all he needed to do was get up there on that stand with his eyes full of tears crying, you know, I'm sorry, I'll do anything to bring him back, but y'all gotta understand, I had to save my life. If he would have gotten on the stand and done that, the jury would have bought it hook, line, and sinker. Even the prosecutor that was prosecuting him said later on that he would have walked Little Willie John out of the courthouse himself as a free man if he would have got up there on that stand with a different persona. But he didn't. He was just too matter of fact, too prideful, too sure, and so they declared him guilty. And even after the guilty verdict, Little Willie John was still too sure of himself. He immediately posted a $20,000 bond that he did not have, he had to borrow from other people, and then he left Washington where the trial and everything had taken place. He left Washington and took off flying to New York to the Apollo. Ain't asked for the court's permission, ain't asked for the lawyer's permission just then took off basically looking like he had jumped bail again and this time for manslaughter and then when his lawyer tried to tell little willie john hey you need to come back come back now first of all so it won't look like you jumped your bail but also you need to come back so we can set up an appeal little willie john wouldn't come back and then he started to ignore his lawyer gossip claims the lawyer was uh writing letters he was calling no response at all as a matter of fact when he finally did get a response letter Letter, which took forever, uh, that letter was basically informing the lawyer that he had been relieved of his duties. Little Willie John was firing him. Cha, Little Willie John just could not be bothered to pay no lawyers. He also could not be bothered to take the court serious or go to jail. Baby, he went from New York. He went several places and he was gigging everywhere. That is until August 1965 when his behind was picked up by the federal marshals and taken back to Seattle, Washington. Once he got back, they said, sentenced him and they gave him the works. Eight to 30 years. This man got eight to 30 years where he probably wouldn't even got in jail time had he not kind of skipped out on his bail and had he uh, done the appeal process. But like I said, little Willie John ruined all that and he starts his prison stint at the uh, Washington State Penitentiary. The whole black music world is saddened by this revelation, but none more than James Brown. And uh, James Brown was even more saddened when after like a year or two, he went to the prison to visit little Willie John and allegedly little Willie John was kind of rolled in in a wheelchair you know he was skinny he was sickly he wasn't feeling good they had shaved his head and so james got angry and he told willie john willie look what they doing to you in here this ain't right man we gotta do something we gotta do something this ain't right this make me sad and little willie john told james brown you know don't worry about it don't be sad you know i'm a man and i'm gonna handle my uh prison sentence like a man and i'll be out of here soon don't worry about it but he wouldn't be out of there soon and gossip on the streets say it was due to that temper that he had that attitude that quick to anger that he had and then on may the 26th 1968 he was found dead in his cell of a heart attack at the age of 30. well the records say it was a heart attack allegedly the heart attack was brought on by a terrible bout of pneumonia but the streets say um allegedly he had got into it with somebody and one of those prisoners ended up beating him to death and i of course was not there so i don't know i don't know all i can do is think and speculate what do you guys think or better yet what do you guys know put them in the comments what i do know is this is yet another sad but very scandalous tale and sometimes history tries to forget little willie john but you can't forget a voice like that you know what i'm saying and then also i've seen some interviews that his sons have done you know and he shouldn't be forgotten little willie john should not be forgotten but anyways guys uh this is the end of the old hollywood scandalous tale of mr little willie john if you like this video like the video please y'all i need y'all's likes and subscribe baby just subscribe. I love y'all. I will see y'all soon with another video. Bye.